Three times in the gospel today, Jesus tells his disciples not to be afraid. Do not be afraid in professing his name. And he assures them that their worth is beyond measure in the Father's eyes. Aren't you worth much more than a hundred sparrows, he tells them. Jesus also speaks these same instructions to us today because the challenge to confess Jesus to the world is issued to every Christian in every generation. There are two things that we could perhaps consider from the gospel and the readings of today. The first is that we are not only our brother's keeper, we are also our brother's shaper. The social scientist will tell us that people who are most successful in life are those who have a positive self-image, those who see themselves as worthwhile. This also applies to Christians. We can be better Christians if we have a positive self-image. We generally want to give us give others the best gift, for instance. We don't give others trash and rubbish. So how can we give ourselves to others in love if we do not believe that we ourselves are worthwhile? As Christians, we should also know and believe that we are made in God's very image. So we should have a positive image. But how do we develop this good self-image of ourselves? We don't actually do it ourselves. In fact, the positive image that we have of ourselves comes from those that are nearest and dearest to us. It is our brother, as it were, our parents, our siblings, friends, who play a big part in convincing us from the very beginning of our lives that we are worth something. It's others that shape us. We, in turn, shape others too. The second point uh, from today's reading, and Jesus, as I've already said, says it three times, he tells us not to be afraid. Because when we realise that our real worth before God is more powerful than any real fear that we have of our persecutors, it is only then that we can stand up to those who would resent the message of the gospel. Jesus reminds us that there are those who can destroy our bodies, but they cannot destroy our souls. On the other hand, if we're convinced that we're worthless, we will lack the courage to defend anything, never mind the truth or the message of Christ. If we know that who we are and what we stand for, then we can take on those who would rubbish us and rubbish our values. The first reading is a great example of Jeremiah's conviction that God is standing by his side despite the torment of his oppressors. He is convinced that God is with him. Jeremiah, Jesus, all the martyrs throughout the ages have faced their persecutors, their oppressors. They did so with courage and steadfastness. I'm sure when we reflect on their stories, you only have to think of people like Irene McCormack, sister of St. Joseph, who was shot dead by a 14 or 12 year old shining light gorilla in Huasiwasi in Peru. Oscar Romeo, bishop who stood up to the those who would oppress the poor, 
and many others like them, they've all had the courage to resist their oppressors and a sense of humility comes over our own selves, our own lives when we think of them. Thankfully, most of us will not be put to such a test, but there is still the raised eyebrow, the sarcastic dismissal, or even the group or mob jeer when we take a Christian stand. And sometimes these negative comments can force us into silence or even retreat rather than being convinced and determined to hold our ground because we know that what God offers is eternal life and what many other offer is simply rubbish. Let's pray that as we meditate on this gospel of today, we will have the courage to stand our ground, to be convinced that we are worthwhile and that what God offers is far beyond and far better than those who would oppress us, torment us and jeer at us.